Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Bible. I'm the moderator of this fine group, and on today's panel are Dr. Weimar Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Chris Gibbs, pastor of Crossway Church in the Mars area. Pete Giacalone from the Rainbow mm. Temple Assembly God Church, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center, Mount Washington. Pastors, we are beginning our fourth season. Yeah. Can you believe that? I do. I do. Four seasons of hard questions. And it's, it's one of the most watched programs on the Cornerstone Network. Has anybody ever come up to you and, and kind of interrupted you on the street and said, hey, you know what? We've had uh, <laughs> occasions of late night. I, I've even had people chase me out of a restaurant. Oh, are you, are you, are you? And, and just to let Don know we love the hard questions. Uh, matter of fact, coming in this morning, uh, uh, one of the men in my church called me because he just bought a home in South Carolina. And one of his neighbors called him and said, hey, I'm getting hard questions down here in South Carolina. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah, I'm not as popular as Pete. <laughs> um, but there, there was a, a moment not too long ago where I had gone to a hospital uh, in Pittsburgh uh, to, to minister to a situation in my church family. And uh, as I was talking, I came out of the room and the nurse who was a 25-year-old male nurse. And the age, I think, is right. important to tell you. A uh, 25-year-old male nurse, and he says to me, he goes, are you... You're Chris Gibbs, right? For, and I'm thinking, yeah, what, you know, what, what's the problem? And uh, he goes, you're on hard questions. He said, I recognize the voice, uh, which, which is pretty cool. I guess not too many people sound like me, but uh, what was really cool is that he watches that. And I thought it was great to have that demographic, 25-year-old guy watching hard questions. That is good. And I think it's funny, too, to you get a lot of different names for this show as well. Yeah. We get hard copy and tough talk. And, uh, with Don uh, all Johnson. Ones. Yeah, with Don Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are like, no, I'm not on that show, but yeah. I am on hard Hard questions. You know, I, I was uh, going to Philadelphia a couple of months ago and uh, I had uh, got my ticket and I was sitting down because I was trying to transfer some stuff to make things a little easier and security guard came up to me and said hey and I'm, I'm thinking well I'm in trouble <laughs> and, uh, and, and she said I watch you on hard questions and I was like oh praise the Lord. <laughs> Well, we're so thankful for everybody who watches. We're glad that you're watching this program. You know, this program is dedicated really to giving people answers from the Bible from pastors. When's the last time you were able to go to your pastor and ask them any question? Maybe you don't even have a pastor. So that's what this program is all about because we believe in the power of God's Word. We want to find truth in God's Word. You know, you can find quasi-answers, pastors, mm -hmm. anywhere. With the internet, you can go find all kinds of misanswers or misinformation. But I'm so excited that on this program, we dedicate all of our answers to the scripture. And I think that's what makes it popular. I think that's why people are interested in watching it. And, and, and Pete, of course, Pete's <laughs> mag ma magnificent personality. But, but we're so glad that you're watching. Stay tuned with Four Seasons. Amen. Four Seasons. That's just pretty cool that we're able to, that these pastors, let me just say this. Let me, let me thank, thank you guys because you don't have to do this program. You can be at home. God knows you have a busy schedule. So I'm so thankful that they take their time and they come here. This is not a television thing. This is a ministry thing. Mm -hmm. This is about bringing the truth to as many people as we can, as quickly as we can. Hey, so what I thought we'd do in this first, this first program in the new season is kind of talk about some personal things. You know, kind of kind of get to know you guys a little bit better and then, uh, then we'll get back into our doctrinal and theology questions. But my, my first question is, what would you say was the best day of your life? And the producer will simply add, so far. <laughs> so <laughs> knowing that you're not done yet. That's so right. what's, the best, what's the best day so far? Well, I'm going to say that my uh, best day was when I got married. Um, of course, I mean, spiritual question would be, well, they accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But I mean, uh, I accepted when I think I was in eight years old. And so, you know, I've had encounters with God. But the day I got married, um, I still look back on that day and remember um, the, the, everything about that. My brother just got married not too long ago. And uh, as I was thinking about that whole day and going back to mine, I mean, there, even though I've been to a lot of different weddings since then, there was no day like my own. It was March 30th, uh, 2012. It was 75 degrees. Um, just everything was perfect. Everybody that we wanted there, the presence of God was there. It was just such an awesome time. And so for me, marrying my bride and being with her on that day and the encounter we had with God on that day was just phenomenal to me. Now, is any, 
Aren't any of you guys not going to say the day you got married? <laughs> <laughs> he set the bar. I, mean, I, we we say, I, I, I was just going to say dinner. I was just going to say dinner. I think we ought to go on to the next question. Yeah, well, you know, let me just say, because I, I was going to say that as well, but for a different reason. And this is, you know, part of my own testimony, but because this is something that I am wanting to give to my kids. And anybody who doesn't have this story, it's great. It's fine because God redeems all things. But, you know, I was a virgin the day I got married. And so it was something that I was able to give my wife. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I was able to say, even in the culture I lived in. It's not that I never had temptations or tendencies or inclinations. But it was, you know, I, one of the things that Maria and I wanted to do was give each other that, that we'd never That's slept awesome. together before we got married. And nor mm -hmm. did we even cross a mental line on that. Uh, and and, and that, was, that, that, to me, that's the best day when you can say, hey, you know what, God, we did this to honor you. And, uh, and there's been a lot of awesome days since then. But that is one of the reasons why I would say my wedding day. Well, let's shift gears to the worst day. So everybody's birthday was that day that... But nobody's going to say the wedding day, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's off. That's off. Who can tell us about your worst day so far? Well, you know, I would say, you know, my worst day so far is uh, about five or six years ago, I, I was getting serious leg infections. Mm -hmm. And the only way that uh, I could get rid of them is the doctors would go in, I would go to a surgeon and he would cut it out. Mm. And so right now I've probably got like uh, five holes on this leg, two on this leg. Mm. And I mean, they were cutting them, you know, about a quarter size and about a half mm. inch deep just to get the infection out. Mm. And, and I remember uh, going down the parkway, uh, going to, to the church and the thought just came to my mind, man, you know, uh, I've been to eight doctors and nobody can tell me what's wrong. That's terrible. And uh, so, you know, that was, that was probably mm. the worst day of my life. Yeah, wow. Man. Yeah. Anybody? Uh, I'll go with uh, a day my mother died. Um, uh, when I went through that process um, of that, that was the only time my faith actually got shook, mm -hmm. where I was almost bitter towards God. Um, I had to actually work myself through that. Uh, because when you're preaching, seeing other people get healed, yeah. doing a work for God, living chaste before him, doing all these things, keeping yourself for marriage, all these types yeah. of things, and then your mother gets sick. And yeah, you can't yeah. see her get better. You're like, hey, I don't, I, you know, you got a couple things to say to the Lord. And so I think the worst day yeah. from probably was when uh, she passed away. And hey, you know, uh, Jay, I agree. The day my dad died, uh, I, I, uh, I cried so hard that I, I even was having a rough time breathing. Uh, so yeah, that was the worst day of yeah. my life. The, yeah. the day uh, we got the phone call. I didn't know he was that bad. I would have been there by his side, but mm. I just didn't. Wow. He kept it from us. Wow. So yeah, the day he, but again, we know he's in heaven. Amen. So that, but, but again, just that, that initial, and then we can imagine what our people go through when, when they lose loved ones yeah. and, and uh, it is a well, bittersweet. I, the loss of a, a family member is, is, a, is, is a very tough, is very tough yeah. to go through. Chris, you got something to share? Yeah, you know, it's a really tough one because I can think of a lot of things. There have been a lot of things. That, I mean, I could share some things. I mean, there, there's personal things that I've been through with abuse or, mm -hmm. you know, even, you know, being molested as a child, uh, rejected by father, all of these things. But I think for me, the it's not what the worst day was, but what the worst day would be. And that is the day that I ever look at any bad thing that's happened and not find how God has redeemed or turned it around. Mm -hmm. And so I can look at those things. And I know you guys would say the same thing, but I look at those things and I don't have a worse day because I see how God has brought me through those things and so I understand what you're saying but for me it's the day that I choose not to see what God's doing through the mm -hmm. potential worst things. Mm -hmm. It is in the fire of adversity yeah. that, oh, yes, that yes. we become the men and women that God has chosen for us to do. He didn't turn the fire on but we get into the fire in right. life and God mm -hmm. refines us in those fires. So let's shift gears. Okay. Who, who do you really admire? Well you know the person that I admire has gone on to be with the Lord but when I was at uh, Liberty University uh, I remember uh, Dr. E.V. Hill mm. came and preached. And uh, from the time that I heard him preach, and, and, and I know that, you know, we don't want to mimic anybody no, or no, copy, no. but I just, he just preached with such power and, and gripped the hearts of the, the students that were there. And I just asked the Lord to give me that type of anointing to mm -hmm. be able to preach in a similar way, not, not to be like him, but I just love the way that he delivered the message. Mm. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a man by the name of Robert Owen who uh, uh, gave me and Elaine a chance. Now, again, I started in the north side, but he called me one night and said, Pete, I really want you to, to come be part of our staff here at South Hills Assembly. And uh, it'd have to be Robert Owen. And the reason why is because uh, I considered myself a nobody. I still consider myself a nobody. And I believe he really, really went out on a limb 
uh, to, to take a kid right out of Bible college and give him the responsibilities. I had great responsibilities there at South Hills Assembly. So uh, I'll always, as long as I live, I'll always admire Robert Owen. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go a totally different direction in this. I had something to say and then it's just changed, but somebody I really, not that you doesn't say who someone I admire the most, but somebody I really admire. And I want, it's my 13 year old son, Vincent. Vincent has wanted to quit his public school and go somewhere else because things are hard and he doesn't understand certain things and doesn't like certain things. But seeing how this kid rises above his own anxiety, seeing how this kid sees uh, people and has invited people to church and seen people come to the Lord all because he has chosen not to give up. I really admire that he's starting his eighth grade year and seeing how even with his anxieties at times saying, you know, no, God will still do something. God will still use me. I admire that. He's more of a believer uh, in his faith than I was at that age. Yeah, that's yeah. good, man. That's real good. I think for me, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, 39 years old at his age wow. to have accomplished all that he accomplished and to carry the burden of that wow. at such a young age yeah. and yeah. to change the world the way he did and to give up his life at such an early age to me. I mean, it looks, I look at what I've done. I'm like, man, Lord, can you help a brother out? You know what I mean? I, I need to do something with my life, you know, because yeah. he was 39 and it accomplished all that. And so to me, I can still watch his uh, speeches. Sometimes if I'm even feeling yeah. down or discouraged, I'll just turn him on. Mm. And even just his other speeches will just begin to encourage me wow. still to this day. Wow. It's, it, it's, it's interesting wow. how God places people into yes. our lives yes. and their encouragement. And I know God's placed somebody in your life that's been a mentor to you. Mm -hmm. I hope that we can encourage you on this program, that we can mentor you in some degree on how you can walk successfully in God's path. Hey, don't go away. We're going to be back with some more hard questions. Welcome back to Hard Questions. Pastors, uh, we're talking about some personal things and some things that we kind of want to share with our, with our friends and our family on television. What's the best advice that you've ever been given? Well, well go ahead. Well, yeah, I was in a credentialing interview uh, with the denomination that I'm affiliated with. The first one that I did was before I got ordained, and, uh, and they had asked me a question. I got stumped, and I just worded my way through it. You know, I thought I did pretty good. And at the end of it, uh, the guy conducting the interview said, yeah, you did really good. He said, but I, will, I have a warning for you. And he said, don't rely on your gift, but on the God who gave it to you. And that is something that I have really held on to. You've got it. He said, you got a good gift with words. He goes, but don't rely on that. Rely on the God that gave it to you. Well, and I was pretty much going to kind of say the similar thing, you know, and I'm reminded of a, a, a story of a elephant and an ant that were walking across the bridge. And as they walked across the bridge, the bridge just shook and they got to the other side and the ant said, man, we sure didn't make that bridge shake. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and so, and, and I would say this advice came through the Holy Spirit. That's and that is, you know, Bill, it's, it's not you. That's right. It's mm -hmm. God. It's, it's not God. you. Richard Dobbins, many, many, many years ago in the 70s, uh, I, I, it was a very small, intimate setting with other pastors. And, and he admonished all of us at that particular time. And, and this was his word. He said very seldom in his career as a counselor did he ever have to counsel pastors and pastors' wives that stayed together in a life of prayer and a word life. Mm. So he said those were the ones who con consistently had, and Elaine and I have never forgotten that, that the importance of a word life in the word and prayer. Richard D. Dobbins. Yeah. Love wow. him. Love him. I know he's a good friend of yours. Good friend. Sister Jolly, when I went to World Harvest Bible College in Columbus, Ohio, uh, shared something with me years ago, and it's always carried through with me. She said, don't let your gifting take you someplace your character can't keep yeah, you. And uh, it's been something that's, that's always right. held true to me, and it's been kind of the mantra of my life in the mm. past 20 years of ministry is that always allowing God to grow you and develop you. Don't focus on growing the ministry. Let God grow the minister. That's, yeah. a, real, that's a real good word. <laughs> Mine's that way too. Mine from Charles Stanley, I had the great privilege of working yeah. with him for 10 years or so. So I got a lot out of the relationship. But one that sticks in my mind of, is that he said, trust God and leave all the consequences to him. Wow. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes we uh, were worried about what might happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. But if we trust God Amen. and leave all the consequences of that obedience, leave that to him, then we'll never find we'll never find ourselves disappointed. Amen. 
always have God's best. That's a great, all of these are great things you should write down and put them in, in play in your own lives. These are principles that help us take steps, of positive steps mm -hmm. towards our faith. A favorite quote, now let's stay out of the Bible. It'd be, yeah. I'm not asking you for your favorite <laughs> scripture. Well, what's your favorite quote? Well, one that I have used often, and it goes back to what Jay said about Martin Luther King. And, and Martin Luther King said, the ultimate test of a person's character is not where they stand in times of uh, comfort and convenience, but where they stand in the times of conflict and controversy. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's been one that has kind of stuck with me. Well, mine's definitely going to be uh, staying out of the Bible. Uh, you're quoting Martin Luther King and quoting people. I'm going to quote Dolly Parton. <laughs> Great person. Fantastic. But, but in response to people who often complain about life and how terrible it is, she says, get off the cross, honey. Somebody needs the wood. <laughs> and so I, it's just something that I just kind of remember often. And it keeps me from, you know, just kind of going places I don't need to be. Uh, a quote I heard many, many, many years ago, and it was Richard Dorch. If you are what God wants you to be, he will teach you what he wants you to know and lead you where he wants you to go. Mm -hmm. So the whole emphasis is being. When we are what God wants us to be, he will teach us <laughs> what he wants us to know and lead us. Where, but it all comes back to being. And the only thing God wants us to be is his children. Amen. Amen. Never lose sight of that. Amen. Uh, mine's, it's kind of a simple one, but it's something that I've held uh, in my world. Uh, is when people show you who they are, believe them. Ooh, a lot of times Angela. we can be, is that who said yeah, that? Yeah, my Angela. Okay, I didn't know who it was by. I just heard it from somebody, yeah. and I was like, man, that's so true. You know, a lot of times, me being such a loving and trusting person, right, right. I took that to heart. That, you know, when people show you, when you see that that looks like a frog, it's probably a frog. <laughs> you know, so uh, when people show you that, believe who they tell you they are. Because <laughs> they're going to prove it out. They're going to prove it out. They're that's prove right. It out. Well, my, mine, I don't remember the, the, the quote at this point, but uh, maybe you guys can help me with this. The 17th century uh, quote that says, when for evil to succeed, all, yeah. all is required is for good men to do nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, when good men do nothing, then evil will succeed. I'll come up with the, the quote. So, he was an Irish statesman, but mm -hmm. my mind's not got it right now. Edmund Burke. Edmund Burke. That's it right there. Thank you, Mr. Google. Hey. <laughs> you wanted to be smart, right? <laughs> look, look, look. Wait, anybody, anybody on here see I'm over here searching? Right now. I'm, like, I'm, I'm impressed, man. Until we saw the phone. <laughs> look, I know how to text and nobody knows. That's where you at. We're happy for every resource available. Amen. To hey, Amen. God Google, man. What yeah. would you want people to know about you? you if they uh, better understood who you were? I mean, what's, mm. what, what would you wish that people would know about you or well, better understand you? Well, I, it, it's probably not the best thing for a pastor to say, uh, <laughs> but I, I, just, I hate conflict. I mean, I just, I just hate conflict. And I think if people understand that about me, they, they really understand me. And, and you know, because again, the buck's got to stop with the pastor. And sometimes you just have to hold that standard yeah. and you're not going to be popular. It, it, and, it's, it, it, and, and we're not asking for sympathy or woe is us, <laughs> but, but there is a time you stand alone. Yeah. That's all there's Yeah, time. exactly. But with that, here's the thing. I was pondering this question. It was like, as a pastor, sometimes I feel as though people forget that we are, or maybe it's just me, but still human being. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think sometimes because I have an optimistic personality mm -hmm. and I'm pretty confident in who I am, mm -hmm. that you forget that I'm a human being and have feelings. Now, I don't need the violin and people, but at the same time, when people leave and don't say why they're leaving, hey, that hurts, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, when people send emails mm -hmm. instead of coming to you directly and they've yeah. told everybody, well, look, I, 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 you cut me, I bleed. And I think that people need to realize that we, I am more than a title, more than a position, but we are still human beings together created in the image of Amen. God. Yeah. That's good. That's that really is good. good. You know, uh, for me, I think people always take me that I'm such a serious guy all the time. And uh, it's that. funny. I, you don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> well, you know, you we guys know, know me. You. Yeah. You know, you guys and know we me. still love you. And that flow from the sisters. Oh, uh, we were on a bus trip together. And uh, at the end of the trip, she goes, I can't believe how much fun I had with you. She goes, I thought you were the serious, hard-nosed guy all the time. Because most time, whether I'm on TV or in the pulpit, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty intense about what I do. Mm -hmm. And so people think that's who I am as a person. And when they get to know me, they're like, wow, you're actually not too bad of a guy. So. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm all right. You're a real, yeah. you're a real guy. Aye. Okay, well, pastors, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Oh, I'm an introvert. 
Legitimate question. No, it, I, I very, very, very much an extrovert. Um, I like my downtime, but I can only handle so much of it. I like to be around people. Uh, you put me in a room full of people, I'm going to make some friends. I'm going to get to know people. Yeah. Uh, my wife is a total introvert, and we we really balance each other out a lot. I'm the gas, she's the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to choose between the two, I guess I'd say I'm more of an introvert, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I, I, I love it uh, when I'm with people mm -hmm. and I try to take advantage of those times and I try to, you know, drop words of wisdom on people. But yeah, I, I would say, you know, leaning one way or the other, probably more toward introvert. Definitely. Don't, don't even have to. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. I love people. Don't and I tell you, I can leave a room. I can know when they were married, when they were born. And uh, I just. That's why everybody knows who you are. <laughs> <in our places. laughs> and, I'm, and, 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 it's, and that's me. I, I, if I come up to you, and, uh, like today, Don, how's your daughter? The wedding's coming up. Yeah. And it's, that's no put on. I, I just love people and I love what's going on in their lives. And uh, I get bored with myself. <laughs> Well, I'm definitely uh, an introvert, and uh, but I can be an extrovert, but it's work. Okay. Uh, right. So by the time I finish, I'm home and I, I pass out somewhere because I'm like, oh man, it took everything out of me. But I can do it and I enjoy it once I get there. Right. Yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah, do yeah. it by nature. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know? Well, it's, it, it's funny how God wires us because I'm an introvert too. I I I, I share those same sure. inclinations, but when you're in a position that you have to be able to deal with people, you be, you step out of that and you step mm -hmm. into that. That's right. And that's how you have to be in your life. I mean, mm -hmm. introverts have some special skills and extroverts have some special that's skills. Right. Mm -hmm. God's wired you that way. Don't right. fight against no, it. If you're an introvert, right. don't be try you. to be an extrovert mm -hmm. and well, vice, right or wrong. vice versa. There's no bad, there's no mm -hmm. good. You learn how to live in both of those worlds yeah. and it's amazing how God will use your talents, your skills and your wiring to become the person that he's called you to be. Because we didn't get this way, guys, on our own. Mm -hmm. This is God's call and his, Amen. his Amen. way he made us. Hey, don't go away. We're going to come back and we're going to have a scripture and we'll have a <laughs> rapid fire round. Welcome back to Hard Questions. We always end each of our programs with a scripture. So today let's look at Isaiah, which says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, Your God reigns. From Isaiah. And these are men who have beautiful feet. I'm not saying it in the natural, <laughs> say it in the spiritual. Pastors, let's go around. What gets you up in the morning, Dr. Glaze? Well, you know, just being in, as I think about my day, you know, going to health club, you know, going to church, you know, seeing people out and about, uh, just to know that I'm making a difference in somebody's life. You know, just to say something, to, a word of encouragement to somebody that was down, just to, you know, know that I've, I've done something that's made a difference. Well, it's the fact that you just said I have beautiful feet. That just blessed my life. You uh, blessed, brother. <laughs> no, the idea of purpose, that's kind of what he said, the idea of purpose. I wake up in the morning, I know I have a purpose. God has breathed purpose into me. Let's get up, let's get going. You know, I, I can't wait for the alarm, and sometimes it doesn't go off. Um, at 6 in the morning, there's just something about going to that, that one spot in, in our house and just burying my head in the pillow and just, mm. uh, you know, a cushion and just praying in the spirit. Mm. I, 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 I look forward to it. I'm little very young kid. That's my son. He comes knocking on my door at 5 30, 4 to 6 in the morning. So that's what gets me up. That's what gets us today. And baby. he's a cutie, bud. He's, he's a cutie. Baby. Well, what gets you up in the morning, my friend? What makes you motivate you to go through the day? I pray God will give you an inspiration and a revelation of his will for you every morning. Get up. Get out the word, Amen. get out your coffee, and seek God. Every day is new. We're glad you joined us on Hard Questions. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.